Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Just uh, good to chat to you guys again. I just thought that something I picked up I thought it might be a nice talking point that we can have a chat about. Um, I think yesterday when we saw the Springbok squad being announced, there was a number of talking points out there. The one I did miss until after I uploaded it was Evan Riss's omission, uh, which got me thinking maybe to do something about that right now. Um, I think the one thing that selection did prove is that the box haven't found the replacement for Dwayne for Milan just yet. Uh, it's, a, it's a strange one to, to look at. Dwayne was obviously very instrumental. I mean, we all remember some of the tries he did. He's a double World Cup winner. His influence on the side was exceptionally uh, intense. And, and we also saw this weekend on the Supersport clip uh, just exactly how uh, good he was in terms of rallying the troops speaking to a very uh, young bench on the side of the field against Portugal and telling them what to do. So his role is transforming. He's now working with all the national teams. He's with the box as well, but with all the other national teams as well. Uh, and he's he's doing some work with them. And he's hugely influential in that. And he's going to go into coaching as we go along. But yeah, we don't have a uh, number eight. Now, looking at number eight, the South Africans, we, I mean, we, we tend to like a big number eight, a guy who, who picks the ball up at the base and you know, runs quite heavily with it, uh, a guy who can take the kickoffs, especially sit in the backfield there and run it back at the opposition. We like that sort of ball-carrying, big, heavy runner uh, as a number eight. Uh, now, this season we've had four tests. Uh, Evan Roos has been used against Wales and Portugal, and Quaka Smith was used against... Uh, uh, Ireland and two tests. Uh, I don't think even they had a bad test. I think he was pretty good in both of those tests. And he's continuing his progression. He's still very young in the Springbok team and the Springbok setup. So it's it's hard to really say that he's done anything wrong. Quacha, of course, played against Ireland. He's a very different type of player to Evan Ruiz. He brings you different things around the you know around the wide channels and around the breakdown where he's more of a jackler and he can he can do some amazing things in the back line. Uh, links up very well in the back line and in the tram lines as well. So Quach is a very a different type of player and he's a very He's almost like a hybrid player because he's not your classical number eight either. Uh, that's to say, 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 said uh, Quach has done a great job uh, off the bench for the box on a number of occasions, really come up and sort of raise the, raise the sort of, uh, uh, what's the energy levels? That, that's the word I'm looking for. Raise the energy levels and try to get the box out uh, and, and has done exceptionally well in that. But what he has probably not done is been that classical number eight that we all like. I suppose mixed mixed reviews about the two tests against Ireland. I don't think it was necessarily bad. But I think the box are in a transition phase and they're looking just who functions well and who goes into the sort of... Um, new attacking style that Tony Brown has and who fits in best there uh, and who's going to be best for the long run till 2027. So yeah, that's one of the, the, the criteria that they have. You've got to fit into that attacking game plan. You've got to do well in that. I think we've seen uh, pretty well what Quaka Smith and Evan Rose can do. Uh, I think what they're probably doing this year is you're going to see a lot of different um, uh, candidates in various positions being tried. I think you know, there's definitely a game plan. There's certainly players that are impressing and forcing their way into the side, and there's players who are pushing other players as well. Uh, but in, in the terms of the number eight role, there were six loose forwards selected for, for the tour. Uh, you have Peter Steph the tour and Ben Jason Dixon, very much a like for like, and he's seen as the backup for Peter Steph. Then you have Sia Khaleesi, who's obviously the captain. Uh, Marco van Stalin, who's very much a six-flanker. More Jackler, more that type of player. He's played eight at times as well for the Bulls at, uh, on occasion, but uh, very much more six, more an open sider. Um, although the box don't play open and blind side, he, you know, they play, play six and seven uh, left and right. Uh, you know, the, the Marco is definitely more... Uh, 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 you know, tacking the ball in the ground type player. Uh, and then you've got uh, Elric Lowe, who was picked, and Quacha Smith. Now, Quacha is probably favourite to, to start the test, although I think the box might experiment a bit against Australia. I think what I would do, would, I would see them as starting with Elric. He obviously put in quite a shift when he came off the bench against Portugal, and it was only Portugal, so we must keep that in mind. But he obviously did enough in the box management eyes to give him a chance. And I think I think what we're going to see is we're probably going to see if he can fulfil that role. Of course, there is Cameron Hanukkah, who's still injured at the moment. 
Uh, yeah, he'll be back in a couple of weeks, but I don't see him coming into the side until maybe the Argentina test, if he does make it into by then, or the end of the year tour. Aaron will certainly have his work cut out, even though he had a great URC season to get into that side, and I think that's the thing, when you're out of sight, you're out of mind. I think the box will still look at him, but they'll know exactly that uh, yeah, there are quite a few candidates uh, around at the, you know, also vying for that spot. And the other guy who was around was Pepsi Butelezi, who, uh, you know, who has played eight quite a few times for for the Sharks, but uh, I think they see him more, and in Rossi's own words, he sees him more as a successor for Sia at six. So, um, yeah, that's one of the things we I suppose we look at going forward, but uh, yeah, I think I think uh, you yeah, know, Ulrich's in the man in the seat at the moment, and he'll probably get a chance, and, and I wouldn't be surprised if he starts at least one of the two tests against Australia. Whether he's the same type of player in Dwayne's mould, I'm not sure. I'm not sure you're going to get that precise type of player again. But you will get somebody who, who certainly puts his, puts his ears back, puts the ball in his arm and runs full ball into the opposition. Uh, my one sort of criticism about El at times is that he doesn't often pass. But um, yeah, if, if you're getting the go forward and the momentum, that doesn't matter that much. He had an exceptional URC, as did Evan Ross. Uh, and uh, yeah, certainly, I think we're going to see him quite a bit in Australia. Uh, saying that, though, has Evan Rust done anything wrong? Uh, the answer to the question is pretty much no. I don't think um, anybody's played themselves out of contention in the squad at the moment. I think it's more a case of horses for courses, and the box is certainly experimenting, trying, giving players different options. If you, you, you see, they gave um, Evan. Uh, two games against uh, Wales and Portugal. They gave Quokka two games against Ireland. It wouldn't surprise me if they now give Elric two games against uh, Australia. And then when they get back, of course, Jasper Visa is then eligible again. He will be able to play. So he's definitely um, uh, a player in the mould of Dwayne Vermeulen in terms of that big ball carrier. And they'll go straight back to him there. So I wouldn't be surprised if he plays both tests against New Zealand. And then the experimentation against Argentina will probably continue. Of course, this is all part of Rossi's plan to uh, deepen the base and, and just give more depth to the Springbok squad. Uh, you know, there's, we're going to see quite a bit of this happening in a number of positions, not just uh, not just at number eight, but there's certainly being quite a quite a um, what's the word I'm looking quite a reaction to Evan Rossi's. Uh, sort of a mission from the squad, uh, which is understandable, of course, but um, at the end of the day, uh, I don't think it's something that really counts against Evan Rose. I, 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 being around the squad for the last couple of six years with with where they work and where they plan, there's always a plan behind these things. They've won two World Cups. They know what they're doing. Um, yeah, of course, that doesn't give us, uh, you know, say that we don't need to criticize, but I think this is all part of the plan and it'll probably be revealed in the next couple of weeks. We'll probably hear once we hear from the team a bit more because we obviously haven't spoken to them since they made the selection. So we'll wait for that first and we'll hear from them on that. But uh, I don't think it's the end of the road for Evan Ruiz. I think we're probably going to see him back in the squad pretty soon. And I think we're probably going to see other players move in and out of the squad as, as they do. Uh, and I think there is a plan for every single player, a roadmap, as they like to, like to talk about it. But now against Australia, they've they've determined that it's Elric Lowe's chance. And I don't think it's a bad thing either. I think he had a great URC season, uh, and he's the man in the saddle. Uh, of course, what that means for the other players around is that it's going to be gets more and more difficult once they settle on this core group of players to, to force your way in. And uh, I think Cameron Honeycomb became injured at the exact wrong time because uh, I think we probably would have seen him play already if, if that wasn't the case. Uh, but saying that, I've got full full confidence in the box and what they're doing. Um, you know, they, they've certainly shown themselves. And even though there's been a bit of unhappiness that they lost the second test against Ireland, um, pretty much they they keep their word and they do what they're going to plan. Of course, the big thing is now going to be Tony Brown's game plan and how those players fit into that on attack. And what they do, they obviously look at very different things that we look at in a game, and they see how the player fits into the culture of the team, etc. So a lot of that will make uh, make a big difference in Elric Lowe's two weeks with the box now. And that will certainly be something that we need to watch. Um, of course, uh, there's several other um, interesting selections. I know a number of you left, uh, left 
messages yesterday. Uh, comments below that. I will be getting to those. There's also a Q&A session coming pretty soon, uh, which I'll be answering those questions as well. If you haven't, the link is on uh, my YouTube site. Uh, you can go, go leave your question there, and I'll come back tomorrow with a with a big video answering all those questions, and hopefully I'll be able to, to solve some of the mysteries that some of you have uh, as best as I can. But otherwise, thank you for watching, and thanks for being part of this. And yeah, if you haven't already, smash that subscribe button. It's always good to, to chat to you guys, and it's, uh, well, until next time, chat soon.